Hey everybody, I'm Vault Fox, and today I'm going to be showing you how I took this 3D printed Bo-Katan helmet and turned it into this finished Bo-Katan helmet that's all ready to fight for regaining Mandalore. Before I get into the actual painting of the helmet, I'm just going to briefly recap what I did to get this helmet to the state that it's in. I have two videos that I'll link up in the cards for you, one on how I smooth out my 3D prints, as well as the other video where I show you how I do my controlled weathering, as well as getting all the base colors on the helmet. But for now, just enjoy this little montage of me basically bondoing and sanding and getting this helmet to the actual phase that we needed it to be at. It takes a lot of work to get a raw 3D print to its finished state, and I always like to, you know, remind people of that, that whenever you're 3D printing things, yes, it is a benefit to have a 3D printer, but it's going to take a lot of skill and a lot of patience to get it as smooth as you want it to be, so it looks like it came right off of a TV show or a movie set. One thing I have really been enjoying about the 3D printing hobby as a whole is learning how everyone tackles getting rid of these 3D print lines differently. I used to use XTC 3D, which is a pourable self-leveling resin over my 3D prints, and now I've just kind of fell into this whole Bondo filler prime sand again kind of method. I kind of find the process meditative, and I always like to reserve this time to listen to my audiobooks or podcasts, so it always is a time that I look forward to, and I know that not everyone is going to feel the same way about this method. They're not going to be very excited to sand it can be pretty daunting but I encourage you to find something that works for you and if that works that's great you don't have to use what I do again there have been people in the comments who tell me that they use wood filler and a lot of people still use that XTC 3d resin so find out what you like and go on with that now as for the painting phase that I'm showing you briefly here, I would have done something a little bit differently now that I've finished this helmet. And what I would have done is actually kind of reverse how I did the stenciling that you'll see later on in the video. I would have done the metallic paint as I did here, and then I would have sprayed the entire helmet with a gray base so that I could then kind of layer the stencil up from underneath, if that makes any sense. And I also would have put a little bit of bright blue underneath so I could do a little bit more of the masking and get a more realistic look to the chipping effect but what I ended up doing worked out in the end so again like I said in my previous video you're only going to learn how to do things better the next time by trying it the first time and that's what I genuinely love about making YouTube videos for you guys I am a firm believer in that there is no perfect way to make something it doesn't even have to be cosplay everyone's way of making something is completely valid you're always going to take away something by learning how someone else made something so I encourage you to make whatever you want to make however you want to make it because trust me no one can make what you do the way that you do so that ended up being more of a motivational speech than a recap but uh hopefully you enjoyed it so now i'm at the phase on the bo-katan helmet where i'm basically going to map out the templates that are going on the front of the helmet so what i did before this and i actually forgot to record it was i did a little bit of free handing work and i'm just going in and using my ruler on top of some layers of painter's tape that I'm going to be using to cut out a template from. So the V was a little bit easier for me to make and these little allies were kind of hard to freehand but I will have a link to the template that I created down in the links below for you if I can figure out how to upload it somewhere. Also if you do pick up the same helmet file that I'm using I'll link that down in the description for you guys. It does come with a template that you can use too. I am not entirely sure if it's something that you can use with a vinyl cutter. It may be that type of file, but I don't have a vinyl cutter, so I'm not entirely sure. But that's also another option if you don't like the one that I have. Now, as you can see here, I took the left ally and cut that out with an X-Acto blade. And what I'm doing now is just taking that same ally, flipping it over so I can create a mirrored version of it to cut out with an X-Acto knife too. And you'll see later on in the video that I ended up not liking how this worked out as one full template. I would recommend putting on the V first and then maybe going back and cutting out the ally separately because I just found it a little bit easier to maneuver on my helmet and get it in the right spot. And you can see here, I put it on all in one piece and it just was, it was really hard to get those allies sitting how I wanted to. And I swear it took me 10 minutes to maneuver this into at least a seemingly, you know, acceptable position, but I still hated it. So what I ended up doing was taping over top of the allies and just leaving that V exposed. And I spray painted the V black as well as putting on those arrows at the top. I used just some thin painter's tape to make those. They were pretty easy to mask. And here I am drawing out another ally template. And this time I'm making them separate pieces. I'm just taking out the left piece, cutting that out with an X-Acto blade. And I'm just going to situate that next to the V in the exact spot that I want it to be. And this was so much 
much easier to do. So what I'm doing here, I cut out the outlines and I'm cutting out the edges around it just to make sure I can get those outlines sitting exactly where I want them to be. And please don't make fun of my circle. It looks really bad, but hey, it got the job done in terms of masking, so whatever. I'm fine. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Once that template was all in place, I sprayed it down with some Montana Gold Shock White and going back over it with a darker gray, which I didn't like. I ended up painting over this, but as you can see, the masking worked out pretty well for what I was going for. And on the left side, I ended up just brushing on the paint and I used a Montana Gold paint for this as well. And this ended up being the one that I used for the allies. I went back over the right one and <laughs> painted that. Once those allies were all nice and cured, I went over with a Q-tip and some bright blue paint and went over all that metallic chipping that I did in one of my previous videos videos where I showed you how to do that controlled weathering. Now this is where I was saying earlier on in the video that I probably would have done this differently. What I would have done is after I did the metallic coat, I would have put a coat of blue over as well so that I could do some masking with this chipping and make it a little bit more realistic. But again, hindsight is 2020. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I were making this helmet again. Once all of those bits of blue are dry, I'm just going over it lightly with some sandpaper just to roughen it up just a little bit more and make it look a little bit more realistic. Now it's on to getting all of these ear caps in the back vent as well as the rangefinder onto the helmet. And to do that, it's going to be pretty simple. Thank you Attack on Titan for getting me through the rest of this build. I realized that I forgot to paint the bottoms of the ear caps this darker bit of gray, so I'm just going in with my paintbrush and painting that a darker shade of gray as you can see. And I'm taking that same gray and painting the top of the rangefinder. I guess this is called a lens. I don't really know what this part of the rangefinder is called, but I'm just painting that a darker shade of gray. Once those were dry, I'm just taking the left ear cap and putting some super glue on the inside of it and super gluing that to the top. Installing the back vent piece is pretty simple as well. You're just gonna wanna make sure you have it situated like this. And I'm taking my Bob Smith super glue as well as my super glue accelerant, putting that on the inside lip of the back of the helmet and just pushing that into place. My favorite thing about this helmet is how the range finder installs. You don't need any types of screws, everything is 3D printed, and you don't need to have any other supplies in order for it to go up and down like it normally should. In order to assemble it, you'll just take the range finder assembly ear cap, put the range finder end into the little circular hole, and then the end cap goes on top of the range finder stock, and it'll secure it into place for you. And it just slots right into place. Before I super glue the rangefinder mechanism into place, I'm just going over it with some silver Vallejo game color. You could bondo this, but honestly no one's gonna see it, so I just was kinda lazy here. And whenever I super glue that down, I installed the rangefinder into the bottom, put the end cap on the stock, and here is where the fun begins. At this point, all that's left is to get that ear cap on, and you could super glue this in place if you really wanted to, but I wanted to make it removable with a magnet, as you can see here, just so whenever we're able to travel, if we're ever able to travel ever again, I could, in theory, take this end cap off and then take the stock down as well so that it's a little bit easier to travel with. And now all we have to do is get a visor in there. And I have a Mandalorian visor template that I already have. I've kind of covered how I make those in previous videos. And I'm just using a, I think it was a Selstrom welding visor, but these are pretty common that a lot of Mandalorians use to get their visors. I'll link it in the description for you guys. And to install that in there, I'm just using a two-part epoxy called Steel Stick. This stuff, it comes together, but it only starts to activate whenever you mix it between your hands. I really highly advise using some type of glove in order to do that. So you're just gonna to take this stuff and mix it together for about a minute until it's all looking the same color and then I just take it and tack it onto some of the points inside of the helmet now I put them around the T part as well as on the top of the visor and after about three minutes or so this stuff will be hard as a rock and it'll hold that visor in place really nicely one last thing before I show you the final product and that is padding for inside of your helmet now a lot of people use the pre-made helmet padding that you can find on Amazon and those are great but I find using upholstery foam from Joann's or another fabric store extremely economical because I get like a, a really long strip of this three inch upholstery foam for about like $15. Sometimes I can find it in the remnants bin and you just tack it inside your helmet with hot glue and you can cut it into as thin of strips as you like and you can even kind of rip it to make it a really custom fit. So I always recommend upholstery foam if you are ever in the market for some helmet padding. And it just so happened that I had an order for one of these Bo-Katan helmets, a raw 3D print, as well as having my finished one so I could have them side by side. And I just think that's really cool whenever things work out like that. And that's all there is to it. If you guys have any other questions, always feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye! And just as a heads up, I am offering these helmets in my Etsy store as well as on my own website. So if you're interested in that, then just check out those links down below. <laughs> 
Oh, I feel like not enough people that 3D print and use Bondo and filler prime and all that stuff talk about. I have to wash this after every time I sand out in the garage. Yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What'd you do? Bag opened up and soaked everything everywhere we tried this. Nah. It's time to go get men. Okay.